Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 11 of my linear algebra tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover the null space in massive detail, along with a whole bunch of other different things, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so before approaching the null space, I just want to make you aware that we can multiply a vector by a matrix by representing the vector as a matrix. So this is not all that complicated. Let's say we have a matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we have a vector B. Well, I'm going to be able to multiply it. Let's just get rid of this. Times our matrix just by representing it as a matrix. And we have to make the vector a column matrix because the columns of the first must be equal to the rows of the second like I have covered previously. So if we have three, two, that means we have to have a matching two and one. And this, of course, means that our resultant matrix is going to be a three by one matrix. And if we come in here and perform these calculations, we will get one times one plus two times two, three times one plus four times two, and 5 times 1 plus 6 times 2. And that gives us a final matrix of 5, 11, and 17. Okay, very important to understand because we will be using that a lot as we calculate the null space. So you might say to yourself, well, what exactly is the null space? Well, if you have a vector A, the null space is a vector B, that when multiplied by A gives you a resultant matrix of all zeros. All right, so that's what it is. And it'll make sense as I show you three examples where I can make these calculations. Now, a null space is a subspace, so it must include the zero vector like we've covered in previous tutorials. It must be closed to addition, which means the sum of any vectors must be in the subspace. It also must be closed to multiplication, which means the product of any vector and a scalar must also be in the subspace. If none of that makes sense, go back and watch my video where I talk about subspaces. All right, so I'm going to work you through three examples. So let's say we have a matrix A, which is 2, 1, negative 4, and negative 2. And I want to find the vectors that are in the null space of this matrix A. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create this matrix, which is going to have x1 and x2 inside of it. And I know that my result should be a vector of zeros. Now what I want to do is solve for the values of x1 and x2 that are going to make this true. So. I'm going to show you how to do this in a couple different ways. But let's say we have 2, 1, negative 4, and negative 2. The zeros are not going to change anything. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And what I want to do here is I want to put this in uh, row echelon form. So how am I going to do that? Well, first off, I'm going to take R1 and subtract and multiply it times one half. And whenever I do that, we are going to get one and one half. And of course, nothing changes on the bottom. Then what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to take four and multiply it times row one and add it to row two. And if I do that, I'm going to get one, one half and zero and zero. Now if I go and convert this to an equivalent system, this is x1 and this is x2, what this is going to do for me is come out to be x1 plus one half x2 is equal to zero. Then I can add the equation for both of my variables with this knowledge. So that means that x1 is going to be equal to negative 1 half x2. And x2 is just simply going to be equal to x2. I can collect the terms into vectors. 
So if we have x1, x2, this will be equal to negative 1 half x2 over x2. And then the basis for our null space is going to be negative 1 half over 1. So this tells us that these vectors are linearly dependent. And now I'm going to show you an example in which we have linear independence. And that would be a situation, just to cut to the chase, where you would get a final matrix like that. Okay? All right, so this time I'm going to have a matrix 1, 2, 3, and 4. And in the final example, I'll actually take the result that I get and multiply it back towards the original matrix to prove that it is the null space. Okay? I'm just showing you a lot of examples here. All right, so now that I have this, I want to solve for the values of x1 and x2 that are going to make this true, just like before. So I'm going to have 1, 3, 2, and 4. What am I going to do next? Well, I'm going to take negative 3 times r1 plus r2. And this is going to leave me with 1, 2, 0, and negative 2. Then I'm going to take negative 1 half times r2. And that's going to leave me with 1, 2, 0, and 1. And then after that, I can take negative 2 times r2 plus r1. And that is going to leave me with rho echelon form, or reduced rho echelon form. So what does that mean? Well, in that situation, we know that x1 is going to be equal to 0. And because that's what it tells us. This is x1. This is x2. And x2 is also going to be equal to 0. So the basis for the null space in this situation would only be 0, 0. That is it. So what does this mean? This means the vectors are linearly independent. Let me show you one more example, and this time I'm going to work you through the whole entire process and then prove the null space. Okay, so this time we're going to get a matrix. It's a little bit more complicated, and I'm going to work it out completely. So let's say we have 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 3, and 4. This is a 2 by 4 matrix, of course, two rows, four columns. So I'm going to multiply this times x1, x2, x3, x4. And I'm going to get a final result. Well, what's this? This is a 4 by 1 matrix. So what is our resultant matrix going to be? It's going to be two rows, one column. So two rows, one column. All right. Now, since the zero column doesn't change, we can just put the original matrix in row echelon form, just like we did before. So this is going to be 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 3, and 4. What are we going to do to this? We're going to take negative 2 times r1 plus r2 and get a result of 1, 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 2, 3, and negative 2. With that guy, we are then going to multiply it times, or we're going to take 1 half and multiply that times row 2. That is going to give us a new result, which is going to be 1, 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 1, 3, and negative 1. We're then going to add row 2 to row 1. And that is going to give us 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, and negative 1. Okay, so I have my pivots there. I can now convert to an equivalent system. So this is going to be x1 minus x2 plus, because we have a 0 in there for x3, plus 2x4. 
which is equal to 0. I can see here that x2 is equal to x2. Also, I see that x3 minus x4 is equal to 0. And add in the additional free variable, which is x4. x4 is equal to x4. I can then solve for each of the variables with this information. So that tells me that x1 is equal to x2 minus 2x4. x2 is equal to x2. x3 is then equal to x4. And x4 is equal to x4. Nothing changed there. Then I just have to factor out variables on the right side of this. So if we have x1, x2, x3, x4, this is going to be equal to x2 times 1, 1, 0, 0, plus x4 is going to be negative 2, 0, 1, 1. And hence, our basis for our null space is going to be both 1, 1, 0, 0. And it's also going to be negative 2, 0, 1, 1. And let's prove that that is indeed true. I just need some space to be able to prove that. So let's take our original matrix, which is 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 3, and 4. And let's multiply it times 1, 1, 0, 0. That is going to be equal to 1 times 1 plus negative 1 times 1 plus negative 1 times 0 plus 3 times 0. And then the bottom is going to be 2 times 1 plus negative 2 times 1 plus 0 times 0 plus 4 times 0, and that equals 0, or that equals the matrix with two zeros, just like we expected. Likewise, I can come in here and multiply this times the matrix negative 2, 0, 1, 1. This is going to be equal to 1 times negative 2 plus negative 1 times 0 plus negative 1 times 1 plus 3 times 1 and 2 times negative 2 plus negative 2 times 0 plus 0 times 1 plus 4 times 1 and if you work all that out that also equals 0 0. So there you go, that is how you calculate the null space or the matrix that you can multiply another matrix to to get a zero vector. All right, and more of this will be used as the tutorial continues on. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.